morning. God is good. All the time. All right. Amen. I like your enthusiasm this morning. And uh, we should be enthused for the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Because we want to trade our sorrows and our pains and everything for the joy of the Lord. So we're going to enter into his presence this morning. Amen.
all mean in that this morning. The joy is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. We can take all our sorrows and drop it because death was arrested and our life began. Eternity once we gave Jesus our life. Amen? Amen.
Hallelujah. Whoever's watching out there, I think the Holy Spirit's flying through the, uh, the screen this morning because he is here.
faces out here this morning. God bless you all today. Amen. Amen. Not only do I welcome all those who are watching, but I welcome you all here too. You guys are a blessing. Thanks for coming out and partaking with us in the worship of the Holy Spirit and the communion, communion of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So without further ado, we're gonna, if I do, we're going to get into the scriptures. Five, part five. We're getting into it. Taming the flesh, and um, I pray the Lord would minister to you today because we're battling a spiritual battle. We all agree with that. We're in a spiritual challenge, and so we've got to figure out how to walk in the spirit more and not walk in the flesh because we need to be guided by God during these times because we're in some very peculiar, strange, a wild, and perilous times. And so we need God's direction and protection. Direction and protection. 
from the Holy Spirit. So we'll get started in prayer. And part five, I pray this ministers to you as much as the worship minister. Now we can enter in and hear and receive what God's Word has for us. So part five, we're going to bow our heads and we'll give reverence to the Lord. So let's pray. Father God, our chains are gone. We are set free because of you. Without you, Lord, we have nothing. But because of you, of you and what you've done, Lord, we have life everlasting. And Lord, we have a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. And an expected end to our trials and for you to be with us through our storms. Lord, help us to see things as you see them through your lens, Father. Pour out your spirit. I remove myself from this message and I ask you to step in and be my spokesperson so that you can speak through the Holy Spirit and touch the hearts of those who are listening. I thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we must have faith in order to tame that flesh because the flesh does not want to walk in faith. The flesh does not want to walk in the spirit. The flesh does not want to do anything spiritual. And the one thing that we need to have more than anything else is faith. Because if we don't have faith, we cannot please God, according to Romans, I mean Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Can someone say amen? He's a rewarder to those who have faith. So I'm going to be talking about a message today, part five of our series, and it's about conquering unbelief. We all are dealing with doubts. How many people have had doubts in their minds about things they're going through, things that they're challenged with, things that you dreamed about that has not happened, things that you've been praying for and you have not seen things happen, or maybe things have gotten worse? Can someone say amen that this is part of the walk sometimes? I think we're all in that bucket somewhere. And uh, so what we need to do is conquer that unbelief because you know what stops us from reaching our destiny? Unbelief. You know what stops us from getting saved? Unbelief. You know what stops us from reaching our goals? Unbelief. Because if you believe something, you can conquer anything. If you believe in yourself, you can do things. If you don't believe, you struggle to reach your goal. If you start a business and you don't have a lot of faith and you're lacking confidence in that thing, you know what's going to happen? You're going to lose out on your potential because you're going to always go by what you see and you're not going to go by what God says. Amen? we got to go by what God says, not what we see. Because we walk by faith, not by sight. So just because things aren't looking good doesn't mean they're not good. Because God works all things together for good. Can someone say, man, he is good all the time? So what happened? This is written, I'm going to get into Hebrews chapter 3 and I'm going to read verse 7. I'm going to read all the way to verse 19, but the children of Israel was our example. They were the example that were given to us. It says these things were written for our example, the children of Israel. What did they do? God had made a promise to them. He said, I'm going to give you the land flowing with milk and honey. I'm going to give you the best of everything. You're scattered abroad, but you're going to get your own land. You're going to get Jericho. You're going to get the dream. Your dreams are going to come to pass. How many people have dreams? How many people have ambitions? How many people have desires? How many people want to see things come to fruition in your life? It's incontrovertible that if you have faith, God will make it happen. Amen. He'll make it happen, Captain. So you've got to have faith. You've got to believe. Now, how would it make you feel? I don't get into the scriptures, but how would it make you feel if you told somebody you were going to do something? Say, husband, wife, parent, child, maybe good buddies or whatever it is, whatever relationship you enter into, but just say for, you know, hypothetical, we're going to just give you a hypothetical here, just say someone walked up to you and said, hey, you know what, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do this for you, I'm going to help you out in a certain situation, whatever it is, you know, maybe I'm going to come mow your lawn or I'm going to do something for you, right? And then what if you say, I don't believe you, come on, man, you're a liar, you ain't going to come by and mow my lawn, just come on, man, you always... You, I don't believe that. How would you feel? I don't believe you. Every time you came up with something, I said, to, to, you know, you said something to me that you were going to do. And I said, I don't believe you. Come on, man. How would that make you feel? If you told me things, I said, I don't believe you. 
Or I'm going to, you know, I'm praying for you. Yeah, you don't pray for me. I don't believe you. You know? If you don't feel like you're being believed, you know what happens? It discourages you. It, it shows a lack of trust. It shows a lack of relationship. It shows that you really don't have respect for that person. If I don't take you at your word, I have no respect for you, do I? Do I have any respect if I don't take you at your word? Now, if you're lying all the time, then I have a right to say, well, I don't, I don't believe you, you know? You've lied before, you might lie again. But if you don't give me a reason not to believe you and I do it anyway, something's wrong with this picture. You know, God cannot lie. He promises you a bunch of things. And what happens is when we say that we don't believe the Lord, you know what we're doing? We're not respecting him. We're calling him a liar. In essence, that's what we're doing. We're calling the Lord a liar. When he says something, and you say, well, I don't believe it. Lord, I know that you said it, but you know what? I don't know. It's not your will. It's a, it's, it's a, like a lack of trust, but it's more we're saying that God's word isn't true. God delights in being believed. I like being believed, too. Don't you want to be trusted and believed? What if you were in a marriage situation and the wife never believed you or didn't trust you? You say, I'm going up the street. No, you're not. I, don't, I know where you're going. You're probably going somewhere and carousing about. I don't trust you at all. You know, it doesn't make for a good marriage. Or the husband saying, where are you going, hon? What are you doing? I'm going to drive around the block and try to find you. Where, what's going on? You say you're going to do something. You're, you're lying. That's not a marriage. That's a mess. <laughs> we do that in a relationship with the Lord if we're not believing them. Right? Relationships are built on trust. We cannot have a relationship with Jesus Christ if we cannot conquer unbelief. Trust is everything. Trust is depending. Trust is relying. Trust is uh, relying on the Lord. I want to give you some points, some specific points. I want to give you seven. I like seven. How many people like the, word, the number seven? Do you like seven? You know that seven is God's perfect number? How many people want to conquer unbelief, by the way? And we're going to pull this out. I'm going to extrapolate from Scripture to show you these points so that you know which ones they are and then you can apply it to your life. And I'm going to get into the Scriptures today. God always wants to edify us. He does. He's got a plan for your life. He has an amazing plan. So I'm going to get right into the Word. I'm going to go into Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 7. So, Hebrews 3, verse 7, and we're going to read some scripture. I'm going to read a couple of verses. It says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, look at that, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit says unto the church. When something says the Holy Ghost says something, you, you should perk your ears up and percolate, get those ears going. <laughs> perk, 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 perk. <laughs> Hello? I'm listening. It's like when you hear the coffee. You hear that rumbling sound, you know, and you're ready to get tired, and you hear the Yeah. Coffee time. It's coffee time. Don't you want the word time? He brews, the men do it, so the men make the coffee. It's in scripture, it's biblical. Men make coffee. He brews. Don't you dig what I'm talking about? So Hear the, hear the noise, get those ears up. It says, he, what? The Holy Ghost says something. Very important to hear this part. It says, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. So we're going to go through some wilderness experiences, amen? Whether it's financial, whether it's relation, whether it's relationships, or whether it's physical, whether it's financial, whether it's any kind of situation, you're going to go through something. You're going to get tested. You're going to get tested in your physicality to see if you'll believe God for your healing. You're going to get tested in your finances. You're going to get tested with relationships, with your children, with your parents, with your spouse, you think I'm going to get married? Everything's going to be Brady Bunch. No, it's not. If you think you're marrying again a Brady Bunch situation, uh, you're going to have some troubles in your marriage. Can someone say amen to that? I say, hey, Lord. I'm not saying marriage is a bad thing. It's a good thing, but it's work. And when the storms come, you have to have faith. God loves marriage. He wants to bless marriage, but you're going to have some challenges along the way. Everything is a battle. It says, the Holy Ghost says, today if you will hear his voice, 
Why do people want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? He said, how can I hear his voice? You need to get in tune with the Holy Spirit. You need to get closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. If you've not been filled with the Holy Spirit, I encourage you to come up and get filled with God's presence. Because when we lay hands on you, get filled with the Holy Spirit. You can get baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire, and that will help along the way. But you need to get near it, near the Spirit. When you're near the Spirit, you're blessed. You need to have a prayer life. How many people have a healthy prayer life? How are you going to hear God if you're not praying? Sometimes you've got to meditate, too, when you want to hear the voice of God. Yeah. You know, we like to do a lot of talking. How many people do a lot of talking when they pray sometimes? We all like to, Lord, 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 help, help, pray, pray, pray. We talk, 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 talk. Yeah. And then we're done with our prayer. And the Lord's like, okay, appreciate that. But I was trying to tell you something. You never stopped to listen. Mm -hmm. Communication is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. It's not a one-way place, you know. What if I came to you and I was having fellowship and you just sat there and you were quiet and I was talking to you the whole time. You had not one word you said. I just, the whole time. And you sat there and you're like, okay, yeah. When can I come and get in there? You know, the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He will not interject into the conversation. He's going to wait till you, see that little thing right there? Like, yeah. God wants us to close the pie hole. <laughs> close your hole. God wants to talk. He's got something, something to say to you. So we've got to listen. Right? Can you listen to the Lord? What does that mean? Just sit there for a couple minutes. Just praise the Lord. Let him pour out his spirit. He'll start ministering to your heart. He'll start speaking. Hear his voice. So we've got to hear his voice in order to conquer unbelief. Amen? We've got to hear it. So that's we get into the presence of God. Commune. Meditate. Now I want to get to the first point. What does it say in verse 8? It says, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. In the day of temptation in the wilderness. Provocation means to provoke. You know when we harden our hearts, that's the first thing. How to conquer unbelief. We've got to get rid of that hardened heart. You know what happens when things are not happening in our life the way we think? We begin to get a little hard. We begin to not believe anymore. We begin to get a little frustrated. You ever been frustrated? You ever get aggravated about things you're praying about that just get worse and you just get mad, you get aggravated? It says don't let that thing fester, that anger. That, if you're not seeing your prayers being answered, you've got to wait on the Lord and keep believing. So what you do is don't let it harden your heart. Let it harden your faith. Yeah. Harden your faith. So you know what? I don't care how bad this is. I don't care how long it takes. God said it. I'm going to be like Abraham and I'll claim it even if I'm a hundred. I'm getting my eyes in. Can someone praise God and say, I'm going to claim it anyway. I'm not going to be hard. In my heart, I'm going to be hot for Jesus and I'm going to believe. So what we need to do is don't let that frustration continue. In ministry, there are times where I can get frustrated, you know. Go to a Bible study, see a couple of people. You go to church, you see a couple of people. At home, I'm praying. I want to see the ministry grow. I mean, months, years go by. After a while, you can get frustrated. What's going on, Lord? Why is, why, why is there a couple people here? What's going on? Or you've been giving, 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 giving to the Lord, and you see your bank accounts just barely squeaking, 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 squeaking by. Lord, I've been giving. You get frustrated, don't you, sometimes? You're praying for a child, and your child is wayward, they're in doing all kinds of crazy stuff, and you're praying for them, or your spouse, or whatever, or your, your, your unsaved loved one, or whatever you're doing. You keep going over this, and it just never gets any better, and you have to go, why, Lord, why is this going on? Come on. I'm sick of this. Anyone ever get to that point? We question God, we get frustrated, we get apoplectic, we get upset. What do we do? What we need to do is take a chill pill. Chillax. It's going to be okay. God's like, get rid of that anger. Get rid of that hardness. Just don't let it fester. Pull it out. And if you've let it build, you've got to get to the altar and say, Lord, I can take this from me. Because you know why? You will keep your unbelief if you let that thing continue. If you let frustration harden your heart. Because we can get frustrated. We all can. We can all fall into things. When we're waiting and wanting and desiring things to happen and we don't see it going on, that's God's testing ground. 
He's building up your faith. He's building up your character in him. He's building everything up in your life. He's trying to help you grow in these things. He's bringing hardship so he can prove you out that you will praise the Lord and you'll still believe him when everything's falling apart. Oh, I know I can use him when he's blessed because he was praising me in the wilderness. He'll praise me when he's on the mountaintop. Can somebody give him glory? Amen. Okay. So this is hard on your heart. That's the first thing. So what do we need to do is don't let your heart get so hard. You don't let frustration fester. Get it out of your heart. And say, Lord, I'm going to keep believing. So remove the hardness. Amen? If you've been frustrated, put the frustration away. That's point number one. Don't harden your heart. That's the first thing he says. As in the provocation. You know what happens when we do get a hard heart? We begin to provoke the Lord because God doesn't like unbelief. If we go around, I don't believe, I don't believe, I don't believe. Lord, why are you doing this? Why? It begins to provoke the Lord. We're not believing. We're mocking God. It's a mockery to God not to believe him. Would you say amen to that? What if I walk to an unbeliever? God doesn't answer my prayer and he's not saved. Do you think he's going to go, oh, I want to get saved now. That's, that's really encouraging. I, your God doesn't work. I might get saved. That doesn't work that way, does it? They want to see your faith. That's what people are looking at to see if it's real. So that's one. I got a homework assignment for you. One of these seven you need to apply. This is the first one. Get rid of the frustration. If you're frustrated over whatever you're praying or seeing or seeking or whatever, put it aside. Because God wants you to conquer that unbelief and give you blessings upon blessings because he's a great God. Now let's go to verse 9. It says, hard not your heart, verse 8. As in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Guess what? You're in the wilderness being tempted sometimes. God likes to tempt it. If he tempted his own people, you think you're exempt? You don't get some exemption. We all get tested. We're all going to go through the trials of life. Amen? Everybody. I want to preach prosperity, happy, happy, good, and all that. But guess what? We're going to get tempted too. We're going to get tried. We're going to go through the trials of life. It's just part of life. How do we overcome it? Doesn't mean we'll remove it, but we can overcome it. We can get victory. We can win the fight, and we can see God move. It says, verse 9, when your fathers were tempted me and proved me and saw my works 40 years. You know what you need to do? When you're going through a trial, can you see God's works? Has God done anything during your trial to show you? When you were waiting for that bill to be paid, he paid it somehow? Or you were feeling sick, and then all of a sudden you started feeling a little better, and he came through. Or, or when you were doing something else, you were, maybe you were spiritually crushed, and then you went and prayed, and the Lord restored you and made you feel better. Or maybe you had a problem in your family, and then God restored it. Maybe he didn't give you a dream, but he's working. Have you seen God work in your life? Anyone sitting here, has anyone seen God do something? If he's done it before, he'll do it again. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am the Lord. I change not. He is going to make it happen. So look back and say, what have you done, Lord? What have you done before? You did it before. You'll do it again. You do not fail. Not one word of his good promise will ever fail. Because God is true 100% of the time. Never fail. Because God can't fail. It's up to us to believe. We're our own worst enemy. We've got to conquer unbelief by getting rid of the hardness and frustration. We've got to conquer unbelief by looking at the past and saying, what has God done before? He did it before. Look at the miracles. He gave me manna from heaven. I had no food. I was struggling. And what happened? There was manna there for me. There was water in the rock. Everybody's like, oh, the end times are coming. Oh, no, we're going to store up and get toilet paper and fill up our refrigerators with all kinds of stuff. Get ramen noodles, spaghettios, get everything we can. Let's get a, a refrigerator and freeze up all kinds of steaks and the chicken and let's load up. Well, when, everybody, when it's down to the tribulation period, do you think you're going to carry all that with you? I got my refrigerator. I'm going to the mountains to be... <laughs> Don't try, you drop them ramen noodle, pick it up. <laughs> you don't believe that God can provide for you. You could have zero, nothing. And you'd be in the wilderness, be chased around. And God will not only hide you, but he'll give you everything you need. A, a bird will come over and bring you some food. 
So I don't believe that. Really? Ask Elijah. The raven spat him. God provides. I don't care what it is. I don't care where you're at. I don't care what's going on. We can't carry refrigerators around in the wilderness and freezers. I know people like that. They're storing up. I mean, they got so much food. I mean, they can feed like a, a million armies. They come over here, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. I'm storing up. It's coming. The tribulation. They stored up. What did the children of Israel do? Didn't they take a bunch of things with them? Hey, let's take all this manna with us. You know, we don't want to let it go to waste. A couple days later, it started stinking. It all rotted. Oh, yeah, what is this? Oh, you ever have food that you left in your refrigerator? Maybe put it in a trash. You ever have a stinky trash barrel? Maybe you threw something in there, a chicken or something, like a little remnant. Sit there. What in the hell is that stink? Woo, doggy. Everybody knows what I'm talking up in here. You're like, I've never had a stinky trash bag. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> We've all done it. Right? Let me try to disinfect it. <laughs> Woo. That's what happened in the wilderness. Pew. God said, what did I tell you? Don't take anything with you. I will provide. I will take care of you. I will take care of your needs today, tomorrow, next week. It says, don't worry about tomorrow. God will take care of the things of tomorrow. He says, I will take care of the birds of the air. I will take care of the grass and clothe it. And he says, if I've done these things, how much more will I clothe you? Oh, ye of little faith. Start believing. Start saying, Lord, I've got you. I, Lord, I know you've got me. Lord, I know you're going to heal me. Lord, I know you're going to provide for me. Lord, I know you're going to do great things. You're an amazing God who never fails. So my eyes are on you. If you want me to store up something, I will. If you don't, I won't. I'm following Jesus. He's going to bless me. God will take care of his people. Praise him. Faith. And if he tells you to store, then store. Joseph did it. He may say store up for seven years and the you know the lean times and the, the fat times. He could. Maybe he won't, but seek him first. Let him show you. I didn't even get to my points yet. I've only had what? One point? I gotta get going here. I'm running a little behind. The preacher stuff going on. On going like the energizer bunny, right? I want to give you something now. What did God say? Verse 10, it says, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation. You want God to be grieved? It says, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. You know, when we feel grieved, I'm grieved. The Holy Spirit, God's grieved when we don't believe him. So I was grieved with that generation. It said, They always, they do always ear, ear, ear. In their heart, and they have not known my ways. What happens? They get rebellious in their heart. That's the second point. The minute we begin to let frustration take over, the second point is, if we don't get rid of that frustration, we begin to get out of God's will. We stop doing We don't read our word anymore. We don't pray anymore. We don't go to church anymore. We don't serve the Lord like we used to. We're kind of like, ah. You know, we're tired of him. We want to do our own thing. Because we don't believe our hearts get hard and then we get to the next stage. What we need to do is don't let that hurt you. If something's not happening, one, get rid of the frustration. And two, here's what you need to do. Two, say, you know what? I want to be on fire for Jesus no matter what's going on in my life. I don't care. I love Jesus, not my blessing. Jesus is more important than my desire. If I don't get my desire, I'm still loving Jesus. If I don't get what I want, I still love God. He's the best. He's got everything for me. He'll give me what he wants. And when he gives it to me, I'll say, wow, it's better than anything I could have ever conjured up on my own. Can someone praise the name of Jesus? He'll give you better than what you wanted. He'll give you more than you ever desired. You say, this didn't happen. Oh, no. And all of a sudden, this happened. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's how God is. He's a God of surprises. So I better rush to the next one. So I've given you two. Verse 11. So He says, so I swear in my wrath. Now God's getting upset. I don't want wrath because wrath means in the Greek hot anger. They shall not enter into my rest. You know what rest is? Canaan. That's the land of Canaan. You know what your rest is? Peace, tranquility, calmness. Rest. How many people want to rest? 
We want joy, don't we? Don't you want peace? Don't you want His goodness in your life? And I'm going to just continue on. This verse right here. This is for believers now. This isn't for unbelievers. This is for believers. I'll be left. This is for the unbeliever. No, that's for believers. Take heed, brethren. Who's the brethren? Right? Let me keep reading. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Do you know when you let hardness happen, then you start getting rebellious? Because hardness happens first in frustration. Then it turns into rebellion. Then all of a sudden, we turn into complete unbelief. God, you don't answer my prayer. I'll never pray to him. He's a failure. I'll just do my own thing. I don't need the Lord. He never works. How can I trust him? He never tells me the truth. He lies. That's what you're basically saying. You get to that point three. When you get to unbelief, you're in some big trouble. I don't see mountains moving with unbelief, do you? So here's a simple point. Get rid of the unbelief. <laughs> get rid of that unbelief. If there's something you've prayed for that hasn't happened, get rid of the unbelief. Say, Lord, if it ain't happening my way, I don't care which way you do it now. I'm getting rid of the unbelief. I'm going to still have this desire, but I'm going to say, Lord, do it the way you want to do it. I'll let you handle it. Jesus, take the wheel. You're the captain of my ship. Let you steer it. I'm, t I'm tired of steering it my way. I keep hitting icebergs like the Titanic. I keep hitting something, but I'm not hitting the right place. Amen? So get rid of the unbelief. Remove it. That's point three. And look what it says. If you don't, you depart from the living God. How can you have a, fel a fellowship with the Lord if you're not believing him? Do you think I want fellowship with you if you're doubting me? And you don't believe me, you don't trust me? Marriages, you think you're going to have nice marriages if you're not trusting each other? Relationships are built on trust and belief. If you can't believe somebody, it's a waste. It's a mess. It's not a good relationship. And you, it's the same with God, amen? So get rid of the belief. Go from unbelief to belief. How do you do that? Start speaking it. Start claiming it. If you've been unbelief, get on your knees and say, Lord, take this unbelief from me. I repent. The minute you do it, it's gone from the east to the west. That quick. God said, I'm going to move that from you. Good. You're good. God is a God of grace. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of compassion. He's a God of forgiveness. He's a God of the second, third, fourth, tenth, twentieth, hundred, two thousand, three thousand chances. Believe me. He gives you chance after chance because he loves you. He always forgives you. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of grace. He's a God of compassion. Let me get to the fourth point. Well, I don't want to depart from the living God. You says, does that mean that I won't be saved anymore if I don't believe? It's not saying that you're going to depart, meaning you. It doesn't, it's not in the terminology of salvation. That's in the terminology of you and your relationship and fellowship with the Lord. You are no longer in fellowship with God if you have no faith. Zero. This is talking in belief and unbelief. This isn't talking about salvation. But you know what it is? You have no fellowship with God. You can't. How can I be in a fellowship in the presence of the Lord not believing? Do you want to be out of fellowship with the Lord? You know what the worst feeling is? Not having any fellowship with God. No presence, no God. You, how long can you go like that as a Christian? That's a miserable feeling. You've got to believe. Believe. Like Journey said, don't stop believing. <laughs> Hold on to that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> I can hit those high notes right now. I just sang a bunch, so I'll stay low. <laughs> Hold on to that feeling. Yeah. Do the baritone journey. But anyway. Believe the Lord. Don't stop believing, right? God wants you to have faith. God wants you to have future. He believes in you. He loves you. You don't think he believes in you? He does. Because he sees the potential in you. He believes in you. That's why he keeps on saying, come on, do the right thing. He's looking at you as his child. He said, believe me. Make it. Pass these tests so I can get you somewhere. You've got to pass. You're not going to get to the next grade until you, to the next level until you pass. You ain't getting to college unless you pass some tests, right? You ain't going to graduate college. You ain't going to graduate whatever. Graduate school ain't going to matter if you don't pass tests. It's the same in life. You've got to pass the test with the Lord because God loves to test us. I don't know why he likes this so much. He likes to test. 
If you just say, believe me, you're going to get tested and tried a lot. He likes it when we pass him because he he delights in faith. I think that's why he likes to test us because he likes to see faith. He loves faith. So when you're going through trial, just take it as a test. He's testing you. Let me continue. Verse 13, it says, But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Go to church and edify each other. Go to church. How am I going to exhort you if you're not in church? I watch online and I don't see any Christians anytime ever. But I exhort them by... Uh, really? Where? I text them and exhort them. I want a hug. I want a hello. I want to see your smiling face. I mean, I'm not saying don't watch online. I love y'all. If you're not in the area, that's fine. But come to church. We love you. I need to see you. Your smiling face makes me encouraged. You encourage me when I see you. And I hope I encourage you when you see me. I hope. I'm trying. I hope. Yes. Good. So someone like, oh, man, that pastor up there. Now you know why I don't go to church. No, I can't. <laughs> so, but we're supposed to encourage one another in church, right? Encourage your brother. Encourage your sister. Encourage everybody. That's why we come. We come to hear the word, we come to praise, but we come to lift someone up. Someone new is walking through the building. Go to them. Encourage them. Amen? Amen. We need each other. If we don't build each other up, we're not going to make it. If you have a dream and I say, ah, you're not that good at what you're doing. You're a business person, but yeah, you're all right, I guess. I know people that are real good at what you do. Well, thanks for the encouragement. You know people are much better than I am. Thanks. I appreciate you building me up. We've got to exhort them, not tear them down. If I'm telling you someone's better than you, what I'm really saying is you're not that good. It's a sly way of me putting you down. We should be building people up, not tearing them down. We need to exhort one another. People are going to say, I'm going to stop with this. <laughs> no, I'm not. Let's exhort. They exhort one another daily. While it is called today, lest the beginning of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin, when I say that's one of the points. Unbelief, being deceived by Satan, will turn you right into a rebellious child. Now look at verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. A partaker is an associate or, or someone who's a fellow. It's like fellowship. We only have... Fellowship with the Lord if we hold. There's the next point, four. We've got to hold it. You can't believe one day and not believe tomorrow. It says we've got to hold it fast to the end. A lot of people believe for one day. Then the next day they don't believe. They're like a yo-yo, up and down. And I believe, I don't believe, I believe, I don't believe. Yep, yep, no, no, yep, yep, no, no, yep, yep, no. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. I believe today was my miracle. Well, how about the last three days when you didn't believe? <laughs> Oh, yeah. God wants you to believe. He wants faithfulness, consistency in your faith. He wants your faith to be strong. You say, well, I failed the other day. Well, repent, get up, keep going. We have hiccups. I'm not looking at any God juniors, but he wants us to progress in our faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we got to hold it. Keep it. That's the part of conquering unbelief. Hold that faith. Hold on to it. Hold on. You say, I let it go. Well, pick it back up. If you throw in, I like this. If you throw in the towel, pick it up. Get it back. That towel is a little dirty. Brush it up. Picking that towel back up. I'm believing. I'm holding my faith. When you hold a baby, you love that little baby. When your cute little dog you just got. And his cute little guy with his cute little tongue out and eyes and ears going all over the place. <laughs> Look at that cute little doggy, doggy, doggy. <laughs> oh, my cute little cat stuck in a couple of shopping bags, peeking his head out. You want to kiss his head like 10 yeah, times? Like 15 million times. He's so cute. Get over here. He's adorable. He is cute. My cat. He's really cute. That's why I can't get mad at him. He's so cute. He's got a cute face after he does something mischievous. I'm like, give me a hug. Get over here. I'll give you a kiss. I'll let it go. You just hug him. You like kiss on him. Like, That's what you need to do with your faith. That's what my mother does on the phone. Yeah. She wants this huggy, kissy, hold on. You gotta hold on to that faith. 
Hold it tight. <clears throat> like your little precious prize. Don't let it go. Right? Are there things that you enjoy? Hold it. Don't let it go. Would you drop something you like if you hold on to it? Just get rid of this. No. He said, keep it. Okay, and get to the next one. Verse 15 says, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Provocation means to provoke. Harden not your hearts. That's the fifth point. Is hear, your vo hear his voice. You've got to hear the voice of God. If you don't hear him, how can you believe him? How do you hear him? Through his word. How many people are reading his word? How can you hear God if you're not reading the Bible? You've got to hear it. He speaks to you through his word. You've got to hear his voice. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Are you reading it? If you're not reading the word, start reading it. It's a homework assignment for everybody. Joe, everybody. Read the word. The assignment's out. One chapter a day for a week. How many people can do it? Yeah. That is what I'm challenging you to do this week. A lot of people are like, I don't read the word. Oh boy, you're already in trouble. You have no faith. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Yes. One chapter a day. Can we do it? Yeah. Everyone's going to read Psalm chapter whatever. Psalm chapter whatever, 131 or something. It's like two verses. <laughs> Okay, for Psalm 133, whatever. Okay, verse 16, it says, For some, when they had heard, did provoke, albeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Not everybody made it through the wilderness. They fell. Why they fall? Because they provoked. What they do? They murmured and complained. Next assignment, the next point that you should apply. How many people have murmured and complained to the Lord about things? Complain, complain, complain. We all complain, right? Lord, this is... We say, I never complain. Really, why'd you pray the other day and say, Lord, why is this taking so long? It takes forever. You know, that's complaining. Yes. Lord, you're taking forever. What's going on with you? Why is this taking so long? Uh -huh. We're complaining. Me included. God's like, how are you complaining? I don't even. Yeah, you are. <laughs> we all complain. Get rid of it because murmuring and complaining is not going to move a mountain. Get rid of it because it provokes the Lord. Verse 17, it says, But with whom he was grieved forty years was not, was it not with them that he had that had sinned whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed? So we see they could not enter in because of what? Unbelief. So I've given you six, I'm gonna give you a seven. It says they sinned. What did they do? They decided, you know what we're going to do? We're going to rebel against the Lord completely, and we're going to do, I'm going to do it my way. The number one hit song in hell, I did it my way. I did it my way. <laughs> number one hit song. I'm not a pruner, guys. So. Yeah, dude, give up, don't give up your day job. We get rebellious. And when we're really going to the point where, one, what we do is we harden our heart, that, two, we, um, we get our heart, we turn away from the Lord, that, three, we have no faith, we have unbelief, four, we don't hold on to anything that God promises and we let it go, five, we don't hear his voice, we don't want to hear God's voice, six, we begin to complain, and seven, we go and rebel and do whatever we want to do. Let's get rid of it, because we cannot enter in because of unbelief. God wants you to enter into what? His rest, his peace, his joy. You want a healing? Have faith. He will heal your body. You want to see dreams come to pass? Have faith. He will give it to you. He says, delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Amen. You want to see God move financially? He says, give and I will open up the windows of heaven. Pour you out a blessing you cannot even receive or even begin to even comprehend. You want to have great relationships? It says, what you've done unto others, you know, God will do unto you, you know? <clears throat> Just have faith. Start trusting God, and he will do more exceedingly, abundantly, more than you could ever ask. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants you to believe him. He wants you to seek him. He wants you to walk by faith, not by sight. He doesn't want you to be sight Christians anymore and start seeing things. He wants you to see him, not see your trouble. Because if you ever believe it, you'll never believe if you're in, looking at the situation. He wants you to look at him. When everything looks terrible, look to God and say, you know what, Lord? You said it. I don't care what it's saying. I don't care what you're saying. I don't care what the doctor says. I care what you said. Dr. J 
Jesus says I am healed from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. You may say that I have heart disease, diabetes, cancer. You may say that I have arthritis. You may say I have all of these things. But God says he will heal all thy diseases by his stripes. We are healed. Claim it, believe it, receive it, and it's yours. Praise him. All right, I'm closed. I don't like to close this message without giving you an opportunity to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've got to do this by faith. If you receive Jesus, you'll have eternal life. One, you're going to repent of your sins, meaning I don't want to live in sin. That doesn't mean you're going to start doing a bunch of things and being perfect after we leave. It means that your heart wants to live for Jesus. Your heart wants to turn to him. Amen? Amen. We all make mistakes. God's a God of grace. He loves you. If you're making mistakes right now, he still loves you. He cares for you. He doesn't condemn any of his people. If you're feeling condemned, that's the devil. He loves you. Believe me, he loves you more than you know, even if you're not right with him right now. If you're doing things wrong, he still loves you. That's how amazing God is. His love never changes. What you need to do is repent in your heart. We don't hear that word preached a lot in churches say that repent. Return from your sin. Amen? Two, accept Christ in your heart. Ask him to come in. John 1, 12, as many as receive him, so then give you power to become the children of God. And three, just believe he got me. Believe on him. Accept him. Can you pray this prayer with me and repeat this prayer? Give Christ your life for the first. If you say this prayer, you will have eternal life. Just pray with me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to come into my heart. Save my soul. Save my soul. I turn from my sin. I turn from my sin. Wash me in your blood. Forgive me for my wrong. Me for my wrong. I, give I give you my heart. I believe you died on the cross. I you died on the cross. And you rose from the grave. Thanks, Thanks for saving me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. How many people prayed and believed this morning? Amen. God bless you. And for those who are watching, you have a wonderful day in the Lord. Thanks again for your support. God bless.